uh, Theresa May has started speaking. She's giving a speech during her visit to Africa. She's currently in Cape Town. Let's listen in. For dreaming of a country in which the colour of your skin made no difference to your rights and opportunities. Foremost among them was, of course, Nelson Mandela. As the world marked the 100th anniversary of his birth earlier this year, a memorial to the great man was unveiled in Westminster Abbey. There it sits alongside tributes to the kings and queens, poets and scientists who have shaped my nation's history, a fitting recognition of the lasting impact Mandela made on the world. Mandela's walk to freedom and that of South Africa was long and arduous. But 28 years ago, barely a mile from here at Cape Town City Hall, he spoke for the first time following his release from decades behind bars. Four years later on Grand Parade, the newly inaugurated President of South Africa spoke of his election not as a victory of party, but of people, of the power of democracy and the necessity of unity, of equality, of universal rights. He spoke of the need to transform not just the culture and politics of South Africa, but its economy too. Of his desire to change South Africa from a country in which the majority lived with little hope to one in which they can live and work with dignity, with a sense of self-esteem and confidence in the future, building a better life of opportunity, freedom and prosperity. It was a bold vision, one shared not just by millions of South Africans, but hundreds of millions of people across the world. People including Kofi Annan. His unlikely journey from Ghanaian suburbs to global leadership took a very different route to that of Mandela. Yet, like your former president, Annan's impact, influence and values spread well beyond the borders of his beloved homeland. And like Mandela, the world is a poorer place for his passing, but all the richer for his legacy. The life stories of these two great men encapsulate the ebbs and flows of history. They demonstrate just how much can be achieved over the course of a lifetime but also that progress can never be taken for granted. The fight to secure our gains is constant. Mandela was born in 1918 with the world on the brink of peace from a war that was meant to end all war. But when Anan was born just 20 years later, those dreams of a lasting peace were about to be shattered once again, claiming millions of lives, including many from this continent. It was in the aftermath of this devastation that the United Nations, the organization that half a century later Anan would go on to lead, was founded. And despite false starts and mistakes along the way, global institutions and cooperation established in this period have delivered great gains for development. It was at the same time that independence movements of a generation of new nations took on a renewed urgency. People across the world won the right to self-determination. Constitutions were written and countries were born. And the embrace of free markets and free trade, which accelerated further with the end of the Cold War, has acted as the greatest agent of collective human progress the world has ever seen. In those countries that have successfully embraced properly regulated market economies, life expectancy has increased and infant mortality fallen. Absolute poverty has shrunk and disposable income grown. Access to education has widened and rates of illiteracy plummeted. And innovators have developed technology that transformed lives. The progress that we have made over the past century is remarkable. The opportunities for the next generation even more so. But to deliver on that promise, we need to recognize new challenges. As war and state-based conflicts have declined, it has been replaced by new threats. In the past five years, terrorists have killed around 20,000 people in Africa. From the 2013 siege in Nairobi's Westgate shopping center to last year's horrific truck bombing in Mogadishu, 
and marches Al-Qaeda attacks in Burkina Faso. Whether in Europe or Africa, non-state actors are threatening our lives and radicalizing our people. And to let day, malign state activity is on the rise, from cyber attacks on national infrastructure and institutions Three. to the use of chemical weapons on the streets of the UK and Syria. Theresa May While speaking there in Cape Town. She is, of course, on a trip to three different countries in Africa, including Kenya and Nigeria, at a time where her government is facing significant questions about the Brexit process and the possibility of a no-deal scenario. Her own Chancellor, <coughs> Philip Hammond, has said that there would be devastating economic damage if that was to occur. She played that down in recent comments on the way down to Cape Town, speaking to journalists. This Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.